guitar designs have been as influential, as important, as copied, and as loved as the Fender Stratocaster. And today, Fender itself makes lots of different versions of its flagship model. Well, in today's video, we're gonna take a look at five different levels of Fender Stratocaster, starting from the most basic, the most inexpensive, all the way up to the most custom and the most expensive. sponsored by Sweetwater. All of the strats that I'm gonna be playing and talking about in today's video are available via the affiliate links in the description box down below on Sweetwater.com. And we're also giving a guitar away. This is the American Vintage 2, the brand new Strat that just came out from Fender, and we're giving one away. The giveaway details are in the description box down below. A quick note about giveaways. I will not be responding to anyone in the comments letting them know they've won. Uh, I will not be on Telegram, and I will not ask for any money from anyone. If you see anything like that, they are scammers. Please report them via the comments section down below. Also, while you're down there, be sure to check out my brand new video course, the Bare Bones Guitar Theory Mini Course. This is a one hour course designed to get you up to speed on the basics of guitar theory knowledge, help fill in some holes, fill in some gaps in your knowledge, whether you're starting from a complete beginner or you've been playing for years. You can check out more about the course in the description box below as well. With all that out of the way, let's take a look at these five strats. <laughs> So first up, we have the Squire Classic Vibe 60s Strat. Now this guitar punches well above its weight class. Uh, it's got a NATO body, Indian Laurel fretboard, Alnico pickups. I mean, everything a good Strat needs is here. And at $419 is actually pretty hard to beat. They've even included a bone nut, which I was actually really surprised to see. At this price point, usually you're getting some kind of plastic or some kind of synthetic bone material. Uh, and this is something that I actually look for and something I swap out on basically all of my guitars when they don't come with a bone nut.
should point out that we're actually playing through my brand new signature port city amp called the Grandville. Uh, I'll have more information on this amp coming very soon. We're gonna release a limited number of them, but all the sounds today you're hearing is uh, the strats through my pedal board and into the Grandville, and it's mic'd up in the other room. And I'm super happy with this amp. It's unbelievable. So overall, the fit and finish on the Squire is pretty good. I mean, it's made in Indonesia, but the fret ends feel nice. There's no fret sprout. Um, it does need a little bit of attention paid to the fret work. The frets don't feel super smooth. Uh, they're a little gritty, especially here in the, uh, the higher registers. I mean, you can hear that like the that's just the string against the fret, and you can totally feel that. And another thing is the quality of the electronics. Like this five-way switch is pretty bad. And if I owned this guitar, this would probably be one of the first things that I swapped, even if I kept the pickup stock. There's just no real difference in the detents, and it's actually kind of hard to land on the right position, especially up here in like the middle position, the fourth position, and the fifth position. Like. It's just real loose and, and soupy. So a new switch, new pots, and I think this guitar would be good to go. The great thing about Squires is they're really good jumping off points. The foundation of a great guitar is here. And with the addition of a few upgrades, pickups, electronics, you could have a really, really great Strat for well under $1,000. So here we have the Fender Player Series Stratocaster. Now this is the Made in Mexico Strat. And a few weeks ago, I actually made a video with my friend Ben Calhoun over at Righteous Guitars where we took an HSS version of this guitar and absolutely threw the kitchen sink at it. We upgraded the pickups, the electronics. We did a crown and level on the frets. We uh, rolled the fretboard ends in an attempt to try and custom shop the cheapest Strat. Now this is the most affordable Strat that says Fender on the headstock. It comes in at $849. And for that money, you're getting Alnico 5 pickups, which I think are an upgrade over the Squires. You're getting better electronics overall. I mean, this is more kind of uh, standard Fender quality in terms of the switch and the pots. Uh, you're also getting the two point tremolo system, which I think is a bit of an upgrade over the traditional vintage style six point trim. They are a little bit easier to set up. Uh, they stay in tune a little better and they're a little smoother when it comes to actually modulating uh, the tremolo. <laughs> Uh, now you're not getting a bone nut, you're getting a synthetic tusk nut, which is something I would upgrade. And you're also getting an alder body, which is more uh, traditional Strat style construction, although it is with a polyurethane finish. But for $849, it's a Strat. It says Fender on the headstock. It looks like a Strat. It sounds like a Strat. It plays like a Strat. <laughs> Okay, so now we're looking at the Fender American Professional 2. And this is another step up in terms of price. We're coming in at $16.99. And this is, I think, the most modern Strat in our comparison today. So for that jump in price, you're getting actually quite a bit for your money. Pickups are the brand new uh, V-Mod 2 pickups that were designed by Tim Shaw. And these are the brightest and most articulate Strat pickups, at least in this comparison. Uh, they are really, really present. There's a lot of detail, a lot of clarity, especially in the neck position. You're also going to get a push-push uh, pot on this bottom tone control here, and what this is doing is allowing you to bring in the neck pickup with 
any of the combinations. So for example, I can go from just the bridge pickup and bring in the neck along with it. It's a neat little mod, uh, not something that I'm particularly fond of, but this is actually a pretty common mod that you can do um, with just about any strat. Instead of having a push-push pot here, you could swap that out for a switch pot and have it be a blend control for the neck position. So um, if you like that kind of thing, you can do it to your strat. You're also getting an upgraded tremolo bridge system with a cold rolled steel uh, block in the bottom, which some people say gives you more sustain, better tone overall. Uh, still a synthetic nut on this and a polyurethane finish, but if you're looking for a super modern Strat, something that's gonna play well, has a nice flat fretboard radius, contoured heel, which is also a nice touch if you are playing up high, you don't have the uh, edge of the, the heel block sticking into your hand. This, I think, is for the modern player who wants a Strat, someone who's not necessarily the most interested in the vintage appointments. Also, because these pickups are so articulate, I think they do work particularly well for like uh, more of the ambient style, you know, more modern guitar sounds. Because there is so much information coming from the pickups, so much high information and presence, I think it actually works really well with big washy ambient sounds. So it's also worth noting that this comes with the best case of all the strats. <laughs> So here we have the all new American Vintage Reissue 2. So this is the guitar that Fender just released, uh, I believe last week. Basically, you've got 61 specs here. We've got the vintage seven and a quarter fretboard radius. We've got vintage inspired uh, early 60s pickups. We have the vintage uh, tremolo bridge with a bone nut. We also have nitrocellulose finish on the body and the neck. We've got a maple neck, rosewood fretboard, alder body. I mean, it really is as close to an early 60s Strat, but by modern day standards. There are a few differences. Now, this is 2100 bucks, 2099, and I think, we can double check on this, but if you look at what this would have cost in the early 1960s adjusted for inflation, I think it was around the same price, give or take a few hundred dollars, uh, back in the early 1960s, which is kind of interesting. This guitar needed a setup. It came directly from Fender uh, and it needed a truss rod adjustment. Now, modern strats have the truss rod adjustment up here, just past the nut, but because this is a vintage style instrument, they put the truss rod adjustment where it was, so it's vintage correct, but it's down here at the heel, which means if you want to adjust the truss rod on this guitar, the neck has to come off of the body. It's not that big of a deal. You just pull the four screws out of the neck plate here, pop the neck off, but it is an extra step and it is somewhat time consuming. And if you have a guitar with a neck that moves a lot, it's kind of a pain. But with that said, this thing sounds like an old Strat. custom shop and this is what Fender is calling the 59 time machine series heavy relic so it has Fender's uh, heaviest relicking job a very thin nitrocellulose finish and basically no finish on the back of the neck which I really really love it feels super worn in uh, the fretboard edges are rolled the fret ends are nice and soft and round it, again if you want to know more about that watch the video I did at Righteous a few weeks ago where we tried to custom shop the player series. This guitar retails at $4,350. And for that, you're getting 
things like the Heavy Relic, the Thin Nitro Finish. Uh, generally, Fender's best wood selection goes to the custom shop. So this is an alder body, obviously a maple neck. Uh, you're getting the hand-wound fat 50s style pickups with vintage style wiring, really high-end pots, really solid switch. The traditional six-point vintage style tremolo system with a pretty big uh, sustain block in the back. And if you're after the super vintage Strat sound, I mean, this is as close as you're gonna get without going and actually spending money on a real vintage Strat. <laughs> one of these strats is for and which one I would buy if I was in the market today. Coming in at the fifth spot, my least favorite of the five is the Player Series strat. Now, traditionally, I love Mexican fenders. I have a uh, Ventera Series uh, Tele Custom that I absolutely love, but the Player Series, I feel like leaves a little bit to be desired for me. And maybe it's just this particular guitar that I got, but of all the five strats, this one is the least resonant. Uh, it's the least inspiring to play. It just feels sort of dead. You'll know what I'm talking about if you've felt a guitar like this before. It almost feels like a sponge. It feels like everything I'm putting into the guitar is sort of being absorbed by it and not giving me much back. And so for that reason and for the price at 800 plus dollars, the Player Series makes the fifth spot. Now coming in at the number four spot might surprise some of you because I am a huge fan of budget guitars. Budget guitars that are really, really good and budget guitars that punch way above their weight class. I love it when companies like Squire or Epiphone build really great guitars that are accessible. With that said though, the Squire Classic Vibe is number four for me. Now the Classic Vibe looks great. Uh, I love the finish. I love the amber neck tint. It's got the looks, but it really lacks and the quality of the components. Like I said earlier, this switch is awful. So that would need to get replaced. And while you're in there, you would also wanna replace the pots, the wiring, and probably the pickups. In fact, I would probably just gut the entire pick guard and drop a new pick guard in with all new uh, components. But it's the things that are harder to upgrade than the electronics that put it in the fourth position for me. These frets feel terrible. <laughs> they feel really bad. It feels like you're playing wooden frets. Now that can be alleviated, uh, with a crown and level, but at the end of the day, they just don't feel great. And to me, that's a huge part of how I connect with a guitar. Also, this has the thinnest neck of all the strats that I played, and that is subjective, but I like a thick neck. I like a big baseball bat neck. So if you're into the thin neck, the small neck thing, this is gonna fit you really, really well, but it just doesn't work for me. At $400 though, in order to get this guitar playing and sounding like I think it should or to its full potential, you're gonna need to drop another few hundred dollars into it. And if you're buying a guitar like this, you're probably already on a budget. And it may not make sense to drop 418 plus dollars on the guitar itself and then turn around and spend another few hundred dollars in pickups and switches and electronics and a fret job and rolling the fingerboard edges and addressing the fret ends. So it's a budget guitar that just kind of misses some key points for me and that's why it's in the fourth position. Okay, in third place, I've got the American Professional 2. This is a really great Strat and I think this one strikes a nice balance between price and build quality and features. This is ideal for the more modern player, someone who's not interested in the vintage style, uh, the vintage aesthetic or the vintage features or lack thereof. This is for someone who's looking for an easy to use, easy to maintain Strat that's gonna sound great, it's gonna be reliable and it has some really nice modern features. The pickups are gonna give you more of that articulation, more of that modern sound. Uh, you've also got little details that are nice. For instance, like the uh, whammy bar doesn't thread into the bridge, it pops into the bridge. And that may not seem like a big deal, except for every time you put your guitar in and out of its hard case, you have to take the whammy bar out. And sometimes with the vintage style strats, it can be difficult to get the tremolo arm to thread into the bridge, whereas this one just 
pops right in, which is a really nice touch. You've also got that uh, S1 switch here, the push, push pot and the tone control, which is great if you're into that kind of thing. But this makes third place for me because I'm not into that kind of thing. I don't particularly like the more modern guitar sound, but this is a truly great guitar. This would be a great guitar for someone who is a working musician, either full-time or part-time, and you need a Strat because you need to be able to cover that Strat sound in your stable of guitars. Don't discount the case that it comes with too. If you are one of those players, someone who's working, it's got a road ready case. I would fly with this guitar in that case and feel totally fine about it. All right, so now we're down to the top two of these five strats. And I have to admit, this was actually somewhat difficult for me. All five of these guitars are great. And I don't think you could really go wrong with any of them. Whether you're after the Player Series, the Squire, or the American Pro 2, I think those are three different buyers in three different price brackets who are looking for three completely different things. But the last two, the American Vintage Reissue and the Custom Shop kind of overlap a little bit. With that said though, and spot number two is the American Vintage Reissue. I think Fender really knocked it out of the park with these new AVRI 2s. They're really good. Out of the box, this does everything I want a Strat to do. And again, because I'm after more of that vintage style Strat thing, it does it. It really just rings. This particular guitar resonates. I mean, you can feel the body vibrating where literally that player series and even the Squire, there's almost no vibration happening anywhere in the body. But this guitar has a few drawbacks for me that put it in the second spot instead of the first spot. One is the finish. Yes, it's nitrocellulose, which I like. I like the feel of nitrocellulose. I like the way it's going to age and wear in over time. You're gonna actually be able to develop some character on this guitar. It's gonna become more of your guitar as you play it and collect dings and scratches and dents from gigs and all that stuff, which doesn't happen as much with a polyurethane finish. But this is a pretty thick nitro finish. You can tell there's a lot, a lot of paint and uh, grain filler on this guitar, especially on the back of the neck. Um, I would immediately take a Scotch-Brite pad and wear the back of this neck down to kind of smooth it out, because right now it's pretty, pretty sticky. And the other big drawback are the frets. So when I got this guitar, I noticed two things. One, the fret work itself left a little bit to be desired. The fret ends need a little bit of work. Uh, and the fret wire itself is a little thin, a little small for my taste. Now, again, that is true to early 61 spec, but it's just a drawback for me. If I was shopping between these guitars, that would be uh, a drawback. Other than that though, I love the pickups. I love the look. This is a really great guitar. But for me, in the first spot is the 59 Custom Shop. This is a particularly good example of a Strat. Much like I said in the Les Paul video, I've played a lot of Strats in my day. This is sort of a staple guitar for the style of music that I play. And this particular one is very, very good. Now we're looking at a significant price increase between this and the American Vintage reissue. Uh, but when you actually get this guitar in your hands and you play it, I think you can tell where the extra money is going. First of all, the neck feels absolutely amazing. Uh, the fingerboard edges are rolled, the fretwork is impeccable. It's got a much thicker, taller fret wire, which I really like. The back of the neck is already worn down. This guitar feels broken in. It feels warm, it feels ready to play. It feels like it's been played for 50, 60 years already. Also the relic job and the finish itself. This is a much thinner nitro finish. Um, and again, because it's relic, to me, it feels worn in, it feels approachable, and it feels vintage. I think this is a particularly good Strat. And if I was in a guitar store and I picked up both of these, even including the price difference, I would be inclined to spend the extra money on the custom shop for no other reason than the feel and the playability. And that's something that I think gets lost in these YouTube videos and these comparisons and these shootouts. Yes, these all sound very, very close to each other when you're watching on a screen, on a laptop, especially on your phone, but even with headphones, they all sound like strats, they all do the strat thing. What it really comes down to is the feel. What do you connect most with as a player? What ticks all your boxes? So with that said, I'd like to know which of these five strats was your favorite in the comment section down below. Which one would you buy if you were in the market? 
Huge thanks as always to Sweetwater for sponsoring today's video and to Fender for uh, sending out these guitars on such short notice so I could film with them. Don't forget, we're gonna be giving away an American Vintage 2 uh, via the giveaway link in the description box down below. So uh, check that out. While you're down there, don't forget to check out my brand new video course, the Bare Bones Guitar Theory course. This is a one hour course that's designed to get you up to speed on the bare bones guitar theory that I think every guitar player should know, no matter your style or what you're into. That's gonna do it for today's five levels of video. Let me know what you'd like to see next in this five levels of series. What guitars are you interested in comparing? I'd love to know. Let me know in the comment section down below. My name is Retschall. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, remember there is no plan B.